we can start by first correcting something that we did before. Uh, one of you mentioned that we don't have the h cube term and they couldn't be more right. We also don't have df, uh, d squared f over dx squared. So I should have written here the next terms as well, like plus h squared over what? Uh, I believe a8. Yes, h squared over 8, d cubed f x n over dx dx. I missed that part. Why, why h squared over 8? Because I need here h squared over 2, uh, h over 2 squared divided by 2. That's why I get h squared over 8. And the same over here, of course, h squared over 8 plus uh, it's not plus okay. okay so many errors but uh, you get my point right so uh, I'm done with the integration for today at least so let's talk about derivative numerical derivative. We talked about numerical integration today. Let's talk about numerical derivative. And I want to start by reminding you the Newton uh, was it with M? Yes? No. Or Raph PH? Yes. Raphson. Right? Method. Okay. Uh, I, I realized that I didn't explain it well. I don't know if you agree or not, but let's briefly touch it one more time. So, what, uh, what it uh, says is that, let's say you are at xn and you want to find uh, the place where fx is 0. Okay? So re remember we had an iterative way of finding it. So if this is fxn, uh, then this will slope will give me uh, d, uh, or, or let me write it, not the d, but f prime xn. This is the slope, right? And I want to go over here. I want to continue the slope and come over here, xn plus 1, right? What is the slope uh, f prime xn? This can be defined as f prime xn <coughs> is equal to basically <coughs> this distance, right? which is f x n divided by this distance which is x n plus 1 minus x n right? and if you rearrange then you get x n plus 1 equals x n minus f x n divided by f x n f prime x n okay now, uh, <coughs> there, there are situations where you, you actually don't know f prime or it's hard to evaluate or something is going on. I mean, you, for example, your f could be not a function but uh, something like a black box. You, end, you, you give it x, it does something in, in it crunches it up and spits out fx okay what what do you do uh, what how do you find f prime x at a particular point in this case yes 
this one you mean it's plus it's minus it is minus uh, just bring this down here take this up there ah okay 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 uh, there, there's some you are perfectly right this is wrong xn this is xn plus one okay perfect thank you but this is correct okay so how do you find f x uh, f prime x in these kind of situations what can you do numerically you could use the black box function to uh, get a set of labels that we can then uh, use line fitting and we get some of the function and then we find the slope yeah exactly uh, let's say you are at a point x right you are your black box gives you fx your black box can give you also fx plus h right there is no problem with it you can simply say that fx is equal to uh, f prime x is equal to f x minus oh okay sorry let's make it smaller fx plus h minus fx divided by h right or you can use uh, a more symmetric formula something like this that will be more stable more fair to do right do you agree so uh, and also as you mentioned you can do some kind of line fitting or did you say spline fitting line fitting and there is also spline fitting right yes so we will do both <laughs> uh, we will do spline fitting okay and uh, to make it uh, uh, to have some I don't know objective in it let's uh, have some objective Let, let's say I have a function I will write the formula of this function, but I will not write it. Thank you. Let's say I have something like this, but uh, I, I, I can draw this only <coughs> after I, I have run my, my box for a very long time. What if I don't want to do that? I, I am right now somewhere here, and I want to find the closest minimum to me. Do you understand my point? How do you find the closest minimum? Uh, or local minimum, let's call local minimum. Of a function, numerically. The easiest way to do it. Exactly. Uh, the, uh, at the, especially at the local minimum, or this is actually what you are saying is both true for minimum, minimum and maximum uh, and you said that derivative should be zero right yeah. maybe we can just simply write df over dx should be zero okay what we can do is, uh, so it, when, whenever this is zero, you are done. So let's, let's draw this <coughs> plot again. And let's say you are over here. <coughs> if it was a potential, a graph of a potential, what would be the derivative? Do you remember potential from physics? Is it electric doesn't matter. Uh, it's uh, okay. Yes, it does matter. Uh, it's potential energy. Sorry. Force. Yes. So you remember that force was equal to minus gradient of 
the potential right so <coughs> whenever uh, over here the gradient is pointing towards left over here it's pointing towards right right and if you follow the force okay then you will end up at the minimum okay so basically what you are going to do is uh, let me think about it first let's say this is my xn this is my f of xn I can uh, find f prime xn the way I mentioned before by numerical derivative and then basically I move in the direction opposite to that derivative right xn prime is equal to xn minus let's call this parameter some gamma okay times f prime xn notice that this xn plus 1 will be equal to xn only when f prime xn becomes 0 right and that will give me the minimum the minimum okay so let's uh, write a code that does this and computing codes okay uh, <coughs> I will start with uh, do, I, do I need to type this four lines from scratch or can I tell you just this okay uh, so let's say x changes between minus 4 and 4 and this is my function and let's plot it okay and this is my function okay let's see what was the next step the next step uh, is doing actually whatever I'm telling you and uh, let me actually type this one from scratch so let's say I already have these lines version 4 these lines give me some x0 versus f0 okay let's say I am I want to plot uh, my position okay I am at some xn and I want to plot my position so let's say I'm x1 equals to what 2 is good maybe then how do you find fx1 yeah sorry f1 I can just copy this one this is my black box you may tell me that you could have just take taken the derivative but I will not take the derivative that's the whole purpose of this x1 x1 so now now I will take this one I will put it down here I will say hold on do you remember hold on then I will plot x1 uh, sorry x1 and f1 as a dot okay with let's say marker size 25 I hope it works hold off Let's try. Well, it's there, but it's too tiny, so I will make it 
75 here. Do you see the dot? It's over here. <coughs> if you write the code correctly, then it will fall down here. Do you understand my point? Yes? So let's try writing this code properly. Uh, let's say for n equals 1 to 100. I want to do something like x n plus 1 equals x n minus I need to define gamma right let's define gamma let's say gamma is 0 0.1 okay now I need to know the derivative to, to find the derivative let's remember what we had to do Where is the rest? Ah, there it is. Uh, I need this formula, right? So I need to define also h. Let's define h to be 0 0.01. Okay. I also need to find these parts. Okay. So now I will really start uh, approaching this as a black box and the best way to do it is to use uh, interpolation. Have you heard of that? No? Yeah, interpolation means the following. Let's say you have a data like this. Okay, and your boss wants to find the data over here. What is the data over there? I and mean, what is the function of, what is the corresponding value? What you do is, you use, usually you use Spline interpolation, which would put a nice curve around it and then you can go from here to here. You understand my point? So, for example, here we use the function which is not at all treating it as a black, black box, right? Let's actually treat it like a black box. So I will use interp1, 1, 1, 1D interpolation of x0, f0. Are you still with me? and then x1 then I will say spline okay let me comment it out and see if it still plots it in the right place it still plots it in the right place do you see it? did you miss anything so far? no I hope not yes okay uh, so this is a function that is doing exactly this, okay? So what you are giving it is the set of data, like you, you say that x zeros are this and f zeros are this. Give me, okay, x zero is this one, f zero is this one. Give me the value at this point by doing this spline interpolation. Isn't this amazing? Spline interpolation. Yes, uh, like uh, if you don't write spline, it would assume that there are straight lines between them. And then uh, it will be very bad because you are trying to find the derivatives, and the derivative will be always constant the whole time, while this one is much better. Okay. Am I making sense? Is there another parameter that we can write besides spline? Uh, well, uh, 
by now you ha you have seen that I'm a heavy MATLAB user, right? Yeah. And I never used anything except Spline. But I'm the worst coder that I know, so you should be <laughs> careful. Okay, so what I will do is I will define something f called f positive. Basically, by f positive, I mean, okay, I need to go back. Uh, this will be my f positive, and this will be my f negative. Okay, so I will choose this one, put it over here. f positive is equal to. Uh, x of n plus h over 2. Do you agree? Yes? Now I put f negative minus h over 2. Plus, minus. So then my formula dictates me that I should be doing f plus minus f Minus, I mean f positive minus f negative divided by h. Right? Now I take uh, all this actually, I put it inside the loop, and finally I write draw now. Right? But after drawing, let's pause for one second to see it slowly, otherwise you will miss it. So, do you, do you need explanation at this point? Did you understand every step? Yes. Yes, very good question. If I don't put draw now here, it will wait for everything to finish and then it will draw. And we don't want that. We, we want it to draw everything that it currently has at that particular moment. Okay? That's a very good question. Oops. Uh, okay. I need to... Did you see that I, I got a call on my iPad? That's very bad. Yeah. I thought that I got rid of all the, those kind of stuff. But anyways. So, one second maybe is too much. Because it's just sitting there. Ah, I think there's another reason for that because I, I should be writing xn fn right okay Ooh. no I, I mean it's wrong <laughs> besides being slow it's totally wrong uh, uh, no no What do you mean? I didn't get you. You are usually correct, sir. Yes, H over two should be inside the parenthesis. The parameter of x. Yes, there. Yeah. No. No, that's that's the index. No, no, uh, no, not that one. Yeah. I'm doing something wrong over here, uh, and I need to find what what is wrong. Ah, I I didn't define f n inside the loop. No. Yes. Now I will define f n inside the loop. 
and it will be evaluated at xn. This is better, right? So now, now let's see it. It goes down there, right? Maybe it's not... Let's make it quicker and let's start from 4 so that you, you, you can see the downfall. Did you see that? Yes? And of course, if I start from minus 3, for example, and besides, this gamma is too, too big. Let's make it 0 0.01. And let's start from minus 4. And let's... This is better, right? You see that it's approaching. Approaching the minimum. Do you see it? Okay. It's a nice way of uh, optimization. But it works locally, right? Uh, what can we do to make to look for global optimum? That's the just eye candy of today's. <laughs> yes, just put what? Put it inside a memory like the Shamper Globes until the point you reach, then you command your code to scan it after that point. Exactly. Uh, it should avoid the places that it already visited. Yes. Right? Yes. So there is an elegant way of doing it. And uh, let me first show you the movie. This is from YouTube. This is called Metadynamics. And basically what they are doing is that while it's it's around here, it's filling the potential energy surface up. I see some smiles in your faces. What a simple idea and what a powerful result, right? Very simple idea. Let me start it over. So you start here, you fill it up, then you are allowed to explore the next minimum. Uh, I don't know how it is done like in all its precision, but uh, sometimes you just read the title of a paper and you get the point, right? So, does, does that happen to you? What does filling up help you? I, I, I will tell you. First, let me talk about the person that did this uh, research. Have you heard of his name, Michel Parinello? Together with Roberto Carr, both Italians, I guess, they developed this method of Carr-Parinello, a unified approach for molecular dynamics and density function theory, 1985. And just let me show you that Nature Materials had a focus uh, celebrating 25 years of some method, right? What a method to be celebrated at Nature Materials because you are 25. Uh, <clears throat> there are good things that you can uh, read here, but we are talking about this paper, not this main paper that he, he did. It's Escaping Free Energy Minima. And let's look at this PNAS paper that has by the way, I, I upgraded my project uh, limit. Like it has to be more than thousand citation, not not ten thousand. Okay. So, for example, escaping energy, free energy minima. So basically, coming to your question, uh, there is some stuff that I didn't read carefully, but basically whenever you are somewhere, you, you fill it up with a Gaussian. Okay? You add, whenever you are here, you add a Gauss, uh, Gaussian to the whole potential. By the way, you don't need it to do it. You can just, uh, as you mentioned, from the memory, you can just remember that I was here, I was there, then this particular point of potential should be higher, etc. You, are you following? 
So basically, when when you are uh, around here, you you keep adding Gaussians to the potential, and you fill up this hole, and then you go to the next one. Do you understand? No. Uh, so, if you are a particle and you are sitting here, and there is some jiggling going around, if you are just sitting like still, then you will not actually move. But if you are jiggling around, then uh, you keep adding Gaussians to where you have been, right? And when they add up, they become a flat surface, flat like surface. Wherever you are, that's a less favorable place now. It gets less and less favorable. Do you see it? And then you, you hop to the next minimum. Yes? Is our goal to match all the uh, potential or to go to the lowest potential? Uh, it's the second one, why wouldn't we just cut the above, like cut the barrier, so the goal can uh, find the minimum? That's the point. Uh, uh, here I'm giving you the potential energy surface. That's a very good question. I'm giving you, and it's a one-dimensional potential. What you could have done is just take the data and find the minimum, right? Do you agree? You could just take the data and find the minimum. But what if I'm talking about 60 carbon atoms, everyone having three coordinates, right? 180 variables. Right? And the function depends on all of them. It's like a black box. You put the, in, uh, the positions as input and you get the energy out. There is no way for plotting the whole phase space. Do you understand my point? Then what you do is you let them jiggle around while uh, you remember where they were. And they are basically exploring all possible uh, configurations that have lower and lower energy. And you will get yourself a fuller end, believe it or not. That could be your uh, project. But do you understand my, my answer? Here I'm giving you uh, the black box already. It's not a black box, it's a function. And you can just write down the minimum of it. You can find, yes? So it makes the sur energy surface flat, but our purpose was to find the global minimum. So it just... Our purpose was to find? Glo uh, global minimum. Global minimum. So from there, how we find global minimum? You, you know, now that you are flat and you know the history, you basically remove all the Gaussians that you added. You, you remove all the sand that you have put on top of this well and you get the shape of the well. What an amazing way to do something, right? The thing is, I thought I understood when, before you showed me you, but when you showed me you, I still can't understand like, how this helps you. <laughs> let's, let's do it and maybe after we do it, we understand it better, right? So how do we do it? Uh, we will basically add Gaussians to f. Okay, the function f, we will keep adding Gaussians on top of it. Yeah, yeah uh, we, we could have just written minimum of the potential function because we have the potential function. But what if you don't have the potential function? What if you have the black box? Do you understand my point? Uh, this is, maybe I'm saying this again and again, but uh, maybe I should give a homework related to this. <laughs> Function. What do we have? The equation of the potential function? 
For example, let's have a homework where you, f you have like 13 balls, 13 points, everyone connected to each other with a spring, okay? What is the lowest minimum configuration? Like 13 balls, right? 13 times 3, 39. 39 coordinates, right? And the energy depends on all of these coordinates. So what you will do is you will find the gradient with respect to each one of those coordinates. And then you will move the springs uh, towards the energy minimum while adding this potential that you have, okay, generated. And then uh, at the end of the day, you will explore a lot of configurations. And when you subtract those Gaussians, okay, one of those configurations will correspond to a nice symmetric object, I'm guessing. This is so much fun. Yes. Uh, who was the first? Yes, go ahead. What's the advantage of this technique instead of finding from memory, like saving the previous minimum and find the minimum of those minimums? You will find the lowest minimum, right? But uh, this one is, as you will see, uh, in uh, as you will see in the in the code uh, that I wrote for two dimensions. It's actually jumping up of the saddle points. So it's doing, it's not bothering going up to wells, uh, hills, excuse me, of all kinds. It's actually jumping from one well to another with almost minimum uh, barrier in between. Uh, it's like, imagine a hundred dimensional potential energy surface if you can do that. And you are basically pouring water to one of them. It will start leaking to the, from the smallest barrier, right? So you will get a lot of uh, efficiency. I hope it makes sense. Uh, okay, we, we need to do it. So I think I did it here. So I will just copy this and add this here. You don't like when I do that? So F equals to F plus, by the way, this is a very stupid way of doing it, but I will still do this this way, okay? Normally you don't add Gaussian to everywhere on that potential, right? Because you cannot do it for 100 uh, atom configuration, right? then really, what is the point? You can just find the minimum. But still, I want, for graphical purposes, uh, can there be such purpose? I don't know, but uh, I, I did it like this. So this is a Gaussian. Everybody agrees that this is a Gaussian that is centered at xn1. Do I need to write Gauss's formula? For you, Gaussian. <coughs> so basically, if you are at x0, then Gaussian is something like e to the a minus x minus x0 squared divided by, uh, I don't know, 2 sigma squared. 2 sigma squared. So this gives you a Gaussian centered at x0. Okay. Let's see what happens. Uh, and remember, there should be some jiggling. Okay. How do you implement jiggling? I will do the following. Every time I find new x, I will add some randomness to it. Random n. What random n does is random n gives you random numbers that are distributed as a Gaussian. So let me do it hist rand 
ten thousand one. Where is it? Do you see? Thirty one. Do you see that these are numbers that are distributed with uh, one uh, standard deviation, right? Good. So I have run n. Let's make it smaller. Let's er erase this pause. We don't want to pause anymore. So you will see that it will first go to this minimum and it will stop because I have too small. Let's start from plus four. That's fun, funner. So I start, I go to this minimum, but I'm not happy there forever, right? So at some point I will switch to this minimum. I'm waiting for the potential to fill up, right? Uh, too slow. No? Maybe the randomness is not enough. Okay. Now I have more randomness. I hope it works. Yes. Yes, it's no more happy over there. We'll go to the other place in a moment. Come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will use the code that I already wrote. <laughs> And this one, uh, the nice thing is that, I don't know, maybe it has to do with the parameters, etc. You get the idea, so... Can we see the, the previous code again if it is done uh, divided by 10? Maybe that will help. Well, it goes crazy. Oh, it, it will go crazy, yes. Let, the, let, the, let, the let, let me show. <laughs> yes. So I will I will show you the the you get the idea right so I will show you the nice code So this is the total potential and you can see that it becomes unfavorable after it wanders around there and it goes to the other one Do you see it So it it's it has already explored okay let's 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 run it again are you are you with me? Are you ready? No, it it will be wandering around, mm -hmm. uh, and then at the end of the day, when you, you you think that it's enough of running time, then you will subtract the Gaussians that you have added, then you will get the minimum. Okay. And finally, as I promised. I will show you the two-dimensional version of it that I wrote just yesterday evening. So basically two-dimensional version is the two-dimensional version of it. Uh, I mean, we had x squared plus cosine x, the, this one has also y squared plus cosine y, etc. And I'm using here contour plot. I hope you are familiar with it. Let's 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 get familiar with it. If I uh, let's get familiar with mesh, for example, it's really beautiful, right? So you can see the potential energy surface here. It has four wells. Okay, do you see it? And saddle points in between. Now I will draw it with a contour. Contour x zero f zero no y zero f zero and the contour plot will give you this so you have wells here right a hill here right and saddle points in between do you understand the geometry everybody yes so now let's see it in action. So this is my point. When I make it big screen, it becomes slow. So it starts at this well. Once it is filled, 
it goes to the next well. Once that one is filled, it will go to the next well. Let's actually stop it and run it one more time. Okay, first well uh, explored. Once it's done exploring that one, it goes to explore the next one. Very good. And then it did it didn't go to the previous one. Did you see that? It goes to the next one, and finally this one. Okay. I hope this was something completely new for you, and you know, like you can use it in the reinforcement learning. I I don't know everywhere, everywhere you have potential energy surface. Uh, you can use it in material science, in complex systems, and everywhere. It's really amazing. So, thank you very much, and see you next week.